you know, uh, Matthew Elliott is a miracle worker. Uh, I, um, uh, I've, uh, I've always been impressed by his sense of timing and his uh, uh, cute political sense, but I never thought I'd ever see him get Tony Benn to come to a taxpayer's alliance. <laughs> but of course it isn't really, it isn't really. It's the, it's the launch of Big Brother Watch. And we've had an interesting couple of years, Tony and I, in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the uh, Big Brother issue. I sort of knew uh, that we were on to something when some years ago I made a sort of throwaway remark in one of the many debates we had in the House of Commons uh, about uh, civil liberties when I just turned around and made what was really a fairly mundane uh, quip to the effect that, you know, when George Orwell wrote 1984, it was supposed to be a warning, not a template. <laughs> and, and what was interesting, we've got a little laugh like that in, in the house, but it actually made quote of the week, and I suddenly thought, all of a sudden, well, actually people are taking more interest than we ever thought in these issues. And that's what we've seen in the last couple of years. We always assume that Brits don't really care too much about all these fancy constitutional issues and liberty and all that. They're sort of things you take for granted and you don't worry about too much. But actually, actually, um, that has not proved to be the case. I mean, look at this meeting. I mean, uh, Beyonce, I wondered how you knew your way around. But look how many of you are here. I mean, I, 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 I sometimes, those of you who have heard me before have heard me, no doubt, make the wise crack about... Uh, now, I always used to speak to prison audiences, you know, and it's always difficult because they didn't know how to open it. You know, it's a privilege to be here, didn't seem right, and it isn't. You know, it's an honour to meet you, didn't seem right, the rapists and murderers and so on. So I lit upon the formula, you know, I, I'm so pleased to see so many of you here. <laughs> and, and, and that's how I feel tonight. I'm so pleased to see so many of you here because this is, to a very large extent, the issue of the age. I mean, I know everybody thinks about the economy and so on, uh, and indeed I had a journalist say to me once, about 18 months ago, in fact, just before the by-election. Uh, surely now we've got all these economic problems, these uh, banking crises, these uh, uh, borrowing crises. It is no longer going to be important to worry about your issues, the implication being that liberty is a luxury. And so I said to him, well, you tell me, when was the last time in Europe when liberty was really under threat? And he stopped and he said, the 1930s, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah? Uh, and in a way we seem the same, that uh, in the midst of all these other economic crises, people are actually acutely conscious of the fact the state is paying too much attention to them, requiring to have an ID card. I've just come here from a debate about whether or not we should have, carry on having a million people, in, innocent people, a million innocent people, on a DNA database. Yeah? And I'm glad to tell you that, as usual, the government lost the argument. They will win the vote, but in six months' time, that won't matter. <laughs> so uh, uh, these issues are um, acutely of our time. And it's also true that even the glitterati, always the last to catch up, very appropriate here, uh, always the last to catch up, the sort of political writers and so on, who are always behind the game. They always reflect the fashion rather than set the fashion. When we had that by-election nearly two years ago, um, when a number of people were really, really quite sharp about it, to say the least. And there was one of them um, who, on the last day, on the day uh, the by-election result came in, and I did a whole load of down-the-line television from my home, and there was a lady on the other end of the line, an interviewer, who, uh, I don't know, I didn't know who she was. It turned out to be Emily Maitlis, the lady who does Newsnight, the, the blonde lady who does Newsnight. Anyway, I didn't know that at the time. She was down the line, and she said, well, you know, if you're going to have a midlife crisis, there's surely a cheaper way than having a by-election. Couldn't you buy some leather jeans and a Harley Davidson? <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and anyway, she came up to me about, uh, about a month ago at an economist uh, dinner party. And she said, I was the one who said about the Harley Davidson and the leather jeans. And I, I said, that's right, I forgive you. And, uh, and she said, oh, but you were right. And she's the third major journalist who said that to me in the last six months. There is something happening. You know, we've, we've defeated them on DNA, we've defeated them on ID cards, thank you, we have no two ID here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, <coughs> we've defeated them on 42 days, uh, we have had the most unbelievable coalitions. Um, I teased Tony, but he was the he was the person who opened my by-election campaign. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, to have Tony...